all right hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you please invite your friends and tell them that we are here live on air uh, you know yesterday we have some Muslims who called us to supposedly refute uh, the horrible mistake in the Quran where Allah he ordered the angels uh, to bow down but yet he is upset from mr. devil and the Muslims they post for us videos from Zach and Naik, and actually all of them they are copy paste nobody is even uh, check out what this Zach and Naik is talking about you know it's not it's not a problem to be ignorant the problem is to believe that you are a smart when you are being ignorant you know why the Muslims check out how valid what those people they say to them like Zach and Naik why you need someone like me and I am a Christian I'm no Muslim to tell you how stupid what Zach and Naik said <clears throat> why you as a Muslim cannot find what is wrong in what those people say to you you copy whatever they say to you you paste whatever they say to you and no one when I use his brain so someone he posted a video in the comment about the video we speak about this topic yesterday and the video has the answer of Zachary Naik I, I cannot play it because I don't want anyone to claim copyright over it you know the Abdul they look if just for a reason however Zachary Naik who don't speak Arabic suddenly he became a grammar teacher in Arabic And he said, Brother and sister, in Arabic, there is something it's called in the grammar Taglib. What is that? Taglib? <laughs> and because Allah <clears throat> was speaking to the majority, and the majority are the angels, and Shaitan was alone, so Allah he said, Angels. I mean, this is the most funny, hilarious answer. Where the Muslims they get the conclusion that shaitan was the only genie there, and where they get the conclusion that the majority are angels. Did Allah report for you, Muslims? Did Allah report for you the number of shaitan and the number of genie they are located there? What you Muslims are talking about? The majority are the angels and the minority are shaitan. Where it says that? Do we have any Muslim can tell us what what's going on? Majority and minority. If you read the whole Quran, you will never find anything have to do with this. Actually, I will get you. I will get you busted by the majority and the minority. Allah in the Quran. Allah in the Quran. Speak to the Muslims always as male, <clears throat> always as what? As male. Rarely in the Quran you will find the Quran mentioned like male believer and female believer in the same verse. Mostly Allah speak to men, and we can prove it easy. If you go in the Quran, we would do a little search. As an example, when Allah He speak about heaven, is Allah generally always speak about heaven, which is the heaven of men or the heaven of men and women? Let us see. This is a chapter 37 verse number 48, but we will go from the start. So nobody will say we are making things up, you know. You can go from verse number one. I mean, anyway, the Quran is not connected. There's nothing in the Quran. Like if you read verse number one, verse number two, verse number three, verse number four, there's no connection between them. There's nothing, nothing. You know what nothing mean? Nothing. It's just a stupid words, sentence after sentence.
and then the Quran starts speaking about heaven this heaven does it contain the majority of men or the majority of women according to Muhammad in the hadith most of women in the earth they will go to hell so they are the majority in hell but according to the Quran that every Muslim he will get many versions the Quran never speak about a Muslim getting a wife in heaven the Quran speak about a Muslim getting many women in heaven and beside them will be women nobody touch their vagina not what chest what chest where chest where the word chest jailed in their tents beside them what about the women is that is that for both the men and the women if the logic is if the majority are men we speak to men huh? well that's mean Islam have something missing in it because the majority who are in heaven are women not men however the one who is a promise to go to heaven obviously they are the men so can I say here Allah is saying to men and women that you will have virgins females actually the stupid Zakir Naik, when they ask him about the word Hur, he said, the word Hur, brother, Hur is a plural name. It can be male and it can be female. Like, what the heck? The Quran said that those females, nobody broke their private part skin. Nobody did. What do you mean it can be male and female? What this guy is talking about? Let us see. <clears throat> All those verses in the front of you speaking about what Allah will give to the male. Read with me carefully. Whom never deflowered by a human nor a jinn. So Allah here is a promise in heaven for who? For the male or for the female? Allah is a promise in the female. A female, she is not deflowered. You know what I mean? What make it uh, more more crazy to find an answer for this that the Quran says that shaitan is not the only one is there you know if you read if you read all the verses in the Quran all those verses speak about this story Especially this verse, chapter 18, verse number 15. Behold, we say to the angels, bow down to Adam. They bowed down except Iblis. And here again, this is a clear evidence that Allah is a scam, for he is stealing a word, have nothing to do with Arabic. I mean, why he is using, calling him Iblis? Any Muslim can tell me why Allah is calling the devil Iblis? Do you know what is the origin of the word Iblis, Muslims? Was his name Iblis when Allah he spoke to him or his name was given later by somebody? Then we continue. It says he was one of the jinns. Do you see the jinns? Muslim, do you see the word jinns? So there was many jinns and there is many angels. How in the world you come with the and figure like you figure out that the angels are more than they are the majority and Iblis was alone. It says he is one of the jinns. 
he is just a one of the jinns. If a Muslim he want to say to me that Iblis, the genie, he was between the angels, that would be funny. So you are telling me everybody there is an angel and only Mr. Iblis, he is from the jinn, he was there doing what? <laughs> it's a very funny explanation trying to find a solution for the stupidity of the God. Same time, if you continue in the story, and yesterday we explained, how Allah he taught Adam all the names of all things and he wanted to prove to the angels that they are wrong and the Quran says that Allah he said to the angels tell me the names of those those things if you are truthful if you are what truthful which means Allah is accusing the angels of li to be liars All those verses in the front of us. So let's go to the first one. Chapter 2, verse number 34. I'm going to go over the story of Adam today so we can laugh together about how many contradictions in the story of Adam. Behold, the Lord said to the angels, I will create a caliph, a caliphate. And here, by the way, we will find the problem with this word caliphate. How Allah is going to create a caliphate for the earth if there is nobody in the earth? This is why there's a big part of the Muslims believe that there was people in earth. If you go to the, the, the book of Ibn Kathir, uh, I think Al-Bidaya or Nihaya, the Ibn Kathir, you will find that Ibn Kathir is saying that there was a group of uh, uh, jinn who took over the earth. And Allah, he sent Iblis with the great army of the genies to fight them and he destroyed them. Actually, you know what? As long as I'm talking about it, let us show some reference so people will not say what well, this guy is talking about. You know the Muslims, you know? I mean, we show them reference in the, in the front of their screen and still they accuse you of lies. So imagine if we say something without reference. They will go crazy. Let me try to find it. I'm sure I will find it. Let us see where we can find that. Hmm. All right. Okay. If anyone can help me to find the book of Al Bidaya and Al Nihaya of Ibn Kathir, volume number one, the chapter of a creation of genie and the story of Shaitan. I found I found uh, uh, an Arabic link, but I would prefer if I can find uh, an English one so we can read together. So if somebody can help, if somebody can search for the book of Al Bidaya and Al Nihaya, volume number one, chapter of a creation of the jinn. Here you will see the story written by Ibn Kathir. By Ibn Kathir. Let us go down. Guys, uh, I will translate, but if anyone, anytime you find something, let me turn first my uh, Skype. Hold on, please. Let me turn my Skype on so you guys can text me the link. <clears throat> because in English, for sure, it's better, you know. But the most funny person yesterday is the one who want to speak in Arabic, but he do not know Arabic. 
and he want to sing the Quran for us in Arabic, but he don't speak Arabic. How you can sing the Quran in Arabic and you speak Arabic? Because they are recording machines. They just make the sound. All right, we are logging in Skype. All right, we are there. Uh, okay. Hey, let's see. Look like we have Mr. Uh, Sheikh Rohi agreed to debate us this coming Saturday. All right, for now, we have no choice but to go by uh, the Arabic until we find English. It says here, وَذَكَرَ السُدِّيُّ فِي تَفْسِيرِهِ No problem, but if there is a reference, then give me the article. If just uh, article, we do not need it. I want Ibn Kathir. Anyway, and it's mentioned in the tafsir of a saddi from Abi Malik, from, 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 from Ibn Abbas, from Ibn Murrah, from Ibn Mas'ud, from, 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 the companion of the Prophet. When Allah, he finished creating what he loved, he left himself up to the throne and he made Iblis, Shaitan, the king of the world. He's talking about the earth. And he was from a tribe from the angels. Like, what the heck? <laughs> What? Guys, do you see the madness? According to Ibn Kathir, Mr. Genie Iblis, he is from the tribe. It's, it is the tribe of the genie. And they are from the angels. So the jinn is his tribe. But this is a contradiction because the Quran says that Allah, he created the angels from light and he created the genie from fire. You know what I mean? Let me take this to Google Translation so nobody says I'm making things up. Hold on. Sadly, we don't have it in English. So what we can do? Google Translation. All right. In the front of your eyes, I'm going to copy and paste. And if there is any Muslim, he have the courage and the knowledge. He dare to say I am lying in the translation. Please let me know. Copy. Paste. What created Allah creation of what I like? The fast enough stupid tra translation Google software. He's saying when Allah he finished creation of what he like, he settled on the throne and made the devil the king of the world. What? What, what, what? And he was of a tribe of the angels. The devil was a tribe. He was from a tribe. It's called genie. From the angels. Are you sure? <laughs> are you sure? Muhammad, are you sure? And here he continues saying, but they called the jinns because they are the reservoir of paradise. And Satan was the king of Kanza. 
and fail in his chest. But God gave me this to advantage to the angels. Let us go to the Arabic because the translation is messed up now. So here it says, uh, the correct translation, and they've been called genie for they are the warehouse of the Jannah. They are the majority of the Jannah. Even the Jannah is taking its name from them. And you are telling me they are the minority? You know, me, do you know guys what I'm saying? Even the word Jannah in Islam is, is a name taken from the genie. So in, in the Jannah, where the name of the Jannah is the name of the genie, there is more angels from the jinn. Do we have any Muslim? And then continue saying, and Iblis with his kingdomship, he was a warehouse master. And he said to himself, Allah, he gave me more and I want more. From the angels, Ibn Abbas said that the genie, when they did mischievement in the earth and they did shed blood, hold on, Muslims, the genie shed blood of who? If there is no human yet, blood of who? <laughs> okay, somebody send me a link. Let me see if we can uh, if we find that. Um, all right, this website kind of funny, but we will try. Yeah, but this is not what we are looking for. This is like an endless page. Not even find the story of the jinn there and the link you sent me, my friend. Anyway. So the genie, when they do mischievement in the earth and they did bloodshed, Allah He sent to them Iblis. And He have an army of the angels. Look, look, look. Shaitan is the leader of the angels. Allah sent Iblis with an army of the angels and they killed the genie who did mischievement in the earth and they kicked them out they killed many of them and they kicked many of them out of the land what is that i mean they, they kicked them out of the earth and they send them to islands and in the seas if, if, if supposedly the islands and the seas are not in the earth Do we have any Muslim here? And then they continue saying. And here you will notice how things is messed up in Islam. Ibn Hatim said, and Sa'id, that Iblis, his name is Azazil. Azazil is a name coming from the legion of the Jews. Let us say it is exist in the in, the, in Judaism, but there's many stories about Azazil as part of the legion of the Jews. And he was one of the most high angels from those who have four wings. Ibn Abbas said, Iblis he was one of the honorable angels but this is always a contradiction for everything in the quran because the quran says he is not from the angels and he is from the best of his tribe tribe 
those people having children and kids already in the heaven having sex and he was a guardian warehouse guardian of the guardians of Allah if, 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 if. and he have authority over the sky of the earth and over the earth Ooh. Ibn Abbas said Iblis he used to control what is between the sky and the earth and this is reported by Ibn Jarir Qutada said Iblis, he was the head of the angels in the skies. Look how the contradiction. Every every line is a contradiction. Al Basri said, there was no none of the malaika. Uh, like he is very fast and very quick. Uh, he is not. Ibn, Ibn Al Basri is saying he is not from the angels. He is originally from the jinn. The same as Adam, origin of the jinn, of, of the human. So look this guy, every, li every line, there's different story contradicting each other. And all of those are Sahaba and the, and, the, and the leaders of Islam. And each one of them giving them the different story for who is the shaitan. Is he an angel or he is a genie? Is a genie word mean that this is a tribe? Or it is different kind of a creation? This is how much they are confused. And then they continue saying, Shahar ibn Hawshab and many others said, Iblis was one of the jinn which is kicked out by the angels. And then some of the angels, they let him get in. Look at this conspiracy. There's some, he looked like he bribed some angels. And then they took him to the sky. What? He was kicked out by Allah, but the angels let him get in? What a horrible thing. They said, when Allah, he, he wanted to create, it, uh, to create Adam to be in the earth. Him and his uh, uh, offspring after him. And, uh, and images with images of his body with it. Iblis, and he is the head of the Jan. He is what? He is the head of the Jan. And he was the most practicing worshipper. If, if, if he was a very good Muslim, Iblis was a very good Muslim. And at that time, and his name was Azazil. Do we have any Muslim here? He have something to say. Anyone oppose what we are saying? May they, may they. If there is any Muslim, he don't agree. Anyone? Guys, don't forget to tell your friends because today we switch the channel to broadcast here. To make it short, every line in this page in the front of us is different story from the line after it. This is Islam. This is how stupid this cult is. One scholar, he says, Shaitan is an angel. The other scholar says, Shaitan, no, is not an angel. He's a genie. One scholar says that Shaitan is one of the angels and his tribe is a genie. They are very confused. If we go to the hadith and try to find some answers, what we will find? Let us do some. Oh. 
אוקיי. Uh, this website is stupid. When you try to find something, it give you anything connected to that word you are searching for. Let us do this then. Hold on. That's not practical. All right. Let us see. We will try to find something. with fast answers mm. Okay, let us see. Hmm. Yeah, but I do not want the, maybe this book here, the BDF file, it might be illegal. We don't know. Because Muslims, you know, they, uh, they post books online for free. It's illegal. If you have a website published officially legally we can use it um, hold on we will find a solution All right. Look what Muhammad he said about the genie. Let us search for this thing. All the messenger said, don't Perform stinja with dung, nor with bones. Muhammad and his followers they used to clean their ass with dung and bones. Muhammad he told the Muslims that the genie food is that they eat shit. Excuse my language, and they eat bones. And the funny Muhammad, he called them that this is the food of your brothers from the jinns, which means this is the this is the food of the Muslim genie. Remember here, Muhammad is calling those Muslim genie. Those are the brothers of the Muslims. Oh, sorry, there were no uh, screen. Okay, hold on. All right, you see it now. Jami al Turmudi, Allah Messenger said. Don't perform a stinger with dunk. Don't clean your ass and clean yourself with dunk nor with bones. For indeed, it is the food of your brothers among the jinn. So those are Muslim genie and their food, halal food, is, excuse my language, shit and bones. Isn't it weird that those are Muslim genie, but they can eat this? And Muhammad is calling them your brothers? Let us see more reference.
Yeah, yeah, I cannot, I cannot use the full book, my friend. Just it's okay, guys. Take it easy. Hold on. Anyway, as long you have, as long you have the 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 PDF, the one who have the PDF of uh, Ibn Kathir Al Bidaya Wa Nihaya, just search there for the chapter of uh, creation of the jinn, and you will read it. Exactly what I was saying. For me, I give you the reference, and you know you can find as long as there is a there's a book in English there, just find it. I'll post the link in the chat. All right. Let us see what else. If we ask the Muslims. Do the human, I mean, the human, they die, right? But do the genie and the human, both they die? What the Muslims, they were saying. Through art living, that dieth not, while the jinn and mankind die. Who is talking? Muhammad. Muhammad claimed that shaitan is one of the jinn, but yet the jinn they die. Notice here, Muhammad did not say the angels they die. He said, genie and mankind they die. That's mean Iblis is dead. There is a story of a guy, his name is Surraq. Let me see if I can find this hadith here. Yeah. This search engine and this website is horrible. Let us see if we change the text. No, it can't be found. Anyway, you remember the you know we we showed you before that shaitan he laid ten eggs and then from every egg there is seventy shaitan and shaitan they come out and uh, you know which means at the end of the day there is more than seventy seven hundred Satan is let us say born every day. So how in the world you Muslims you say that Allah was speaking to the majority and they are the angels and the minority have to follow? That is very stupid. There's nowhere in the Quran or in the Hadith or anywhere it says that there's angels are more than the genie. Actually, it is the opposite. It is the opposite. And I'm talking according to Islam. Each time you want to go inside the bathroom, the Prophet, he taught you, taught the Muslims that they have to say certain things before you go to the bathroom. And the funny here, you will notice something Muhammad, he mentioned about the, the genie, that they are male and female. There's male devil and female devil. Question. If Allah created a fixed numbers, of angels and the angels according to Islam they are neither male or female while in the same time the genies are male and female who is going to be more in number the one who is fixed and there's no new babies or the one who produce children's and as we showed you before, that every day, that one devil, every day, he 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 give birth by eggs as eggs, after he have sex with himself. 
10 eggs with 70 devil for from each and from those eggs every egg produce male and female which means the first shaitan he was doing that after that the rest they are male and female already so if every shaitan he can produce 700 that's mean every one individual male and female from those shaitan they can produce a day 700 shaitan so based on this the genie are the major number of a creation according to islam which means they are more than the angels and they are more than the human. There's no human can make in one day 700 child. Shaitan, he can do that. If we continue. Whenever the messenger of Allah entered the toilet, he would say, I seek refuge with Allah from the male and the female devil. How in the world and why in the world Muhammad is afraid of the female devil? I understand Muhammad is afraid from the male devil. What the female devil would do to Muhammad? Any Muslim can tell me? Why Muhammad is afraid from the female devil specifically when he go in the bathroom? What the female devil would do to him? Any Muslim have a solution? What, what a person do in the bathroom, guys? What, what bathroom is talking about? This is the toilet, right? It's a place where you do relief yourself. So Muhammad now is going to uncover his ass. So what is the worry of Muhammad? Any Muslim can tell us what the male, male devil will do to Muhammad and what the female devil can do to Muhammad in the toilet? Yeah, actually the Muslim, the Muslims, by the way, they have descriptions of the the, the 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 female genie. They say that if if a Muslim man he see a woman, and she have a very a very long dark hair, she is a genie. You know, like some women they have a really long hair, like her hair, let's say, touching her her knee. They think she is a genie. This is not a human. All of Islam. Jin is whispering in CP's ears. My friend, the one who is whispering here is your prophet. And your prophet is afraid of the genie. Can you tell me why? This is a prophet of Allah, yet he is scared to death to enter the bathroom without making a prayer before he entered the bathroom, asking Allah himself defense inside the bathroom. Isn't it this is enough to prove that Muhammad is a false prophet? Where Muhammad is going? Is he going to war? He is going inside the bathroom. Any Muslim want to tell me what's happening? I am going to the bathroom. Muhammad, if, if to go in the bathroom, Muhammad is making a prayer asking Allah help, Allah himself, to what Allah will do inside the bathroom. What are you talking about? You are going in the bathroom, you will take off your panty, Muhammad. Why you are terrified to take off your panty in the bathroom? And why Muhammad is not worried about the female genie when he is in the bedroom? Do you really Muslims believe that genie they live in the bathroom? Hmm? Is that like the room for the genie? Yes. Even Muhammad, he said, don't piss in a ground hole. Anyone knows why? 
because genie live there so genie they eat poopoo -poo and bones genie they live in the bathroom genie they live inside holes in the ground let me show you the hate about that Maybe we can find you something. This man is a is a madman. You know, it is. A, what is that? Whenever the prophet he went to answer the call of nature, he used to say, "Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al qubthi wal qabaith." Oh Allah, I seek refuge in the bathroom. What will happen in the bathroom? Muhammad, should we, you know, guys, why we, we don't start an insurance company and we sell Muslims insurance for the bathroom? Bathroom insurance. And we make them agree with policy that anything happened to you in the bathroom by the attack of the genie, we will pay you 10 times. And because there is no genie exists, there is no way for a Muslim can claim such a claim. Genie attack in the bathroom? Female genie and male genie. <clears throat> Let us see. This one we cannot find it. Let us see something else. Mm. And, uh, uh, we try to find not everything sadly is in English. Let's go to the Quran. Try to find something funny in the Quran about the genie. Muhammad, he used another word about the genie. You see, sometimes he called him Iblis, which is not an Arabic word. You can search it in Google and see where is Iblis coming from. Sometimes he called him genie, which is not an Arabic word. And sometimes he called him Afrit. Afrit, who's Afrit? Mr. Afrit, I mean a jinn. Let us see what the story of this Afrit. Who is this guy? Said an Afrit. <laughs> Look at the translation. <laughs> you know, guys. Do you know? Do you know the? The story about the genie and the ball. Do you know this story? This is where the word Afrit is coming from. Afrit is the genie and the ball. Exactly. It's an old legend about legends about uh, uh, a genie who was captured inside the container. And he was jailed there by magic. And then the lucky one is the one who find the container and the one who opened the container he become his master so now they are telling us a story about Solomon Solomon he have many afrit and those afrit are from the jinn and they are shayateen and they are very fast they can bring you anything in the speed of like the blink of an eye like this guys look 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 what abraham said abraham is a muslim guys did you see what abraham she said was said abraham is a muslim let me show you what abraham said
and if read is a as a powerful jinn this is the muslim definition not mine abraham is a muslim who don't like me at all it is a powerful jinn in case you do not know there is some genies they go to the gym and they do bodybuilding and there's some genie they are not powerful not all of them they are powerful all of them are very powerful by the way but I mean there's some they are more powerful than the others so afrit sound like a rank in Islam according to this Abdul when you say this genie is afrit it's mean like he is special forces is that correct mr. Abrams this is a special force a genie is he a commandos yeah, but is that a special force genie? Is he a special force? Like commandos, marines? Let us see what we can find about this in the hadith. About Mr. Afrid. in the ball look what happened with Muhammad when Afrit he came to him you see here in translation they say a strong demon from the jinn that's false translation Muslim do not believe in demons do you see it Muslims do not believe in demons and genie is not a demon he is not a spirit he is a creature who eat and shit and he have sex not demon here it says Ifrit Ifrit not demon liars Ifrit I'm using my mouse to type so it is Mr. Ifrit the prophet said a strong effort a strong effort from the genies came to me yesterday when 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 yesterday suddenly so as to spoil my prayer but Allah Allah enabled me to over overpower him so I cut him and I intend intended to tie him to the pillars of the mosque the prophet he tied the afrit hold on Sharon guys do you see what I'm saying the prophet of Allah afrit and Abraham he just told us afrit is very powerful is a super this is the the, 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 the like the the, uh, the special force of the genie the most powerful ones he came to the prophet and the prophet was praying and the genie was doing this ah, 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 you cannot catch me you cannot catch me huh? and then the prophet he captured him he captured the genie and he intended to tie him up to the column hold on we just saw mr abraham saying that genies can change their shape Guys, did he say that? Did Abraham say it, that genie are shape shifters? Did you see what he said? Let me put it for you in the screen. Genies are shape shifters. What does that mean? They change their shape. Question, Mr. Abraham. As long as those genie they can change their shape, how you can capture any? How you can tie him? Because if you tie his hand, he can make his hand smaller and he will release himself. If you tie him from the neck, he can make himself without a neck, he can make himself a snake. So how he can tie him? And you just admitted that they are shapeshifter. Not only that, genie he can go invisible. Is that correct, Mr. Uh, Shapeshifter Genie? 
yeah they can appear as a human and they have sex with them correct I agree yeah uh -huh. yeah but let me ask you isn't it you Muslim believe that genie can go invisible and nobody can hold him he can go through walls so how Muhammad he captured this guy is it the Quran says they see you but you don't see them is that correct Abraham see this is guys in their true shape they are invisible so he can go back to his true shape so what Muhammad mean he, ca he, he captured him how you can capture a person who is invisible who can go invisible any second he want do you Muslims use a brain if this guy let us see he is now coming to me as a donkey okay I hold him but he can shift his shape he can be he can be invisible which means he can be nothing he can throw go walk through walls how I can capture such a creature any Muslim And then Muhammad, after he cut this genie, he intended to tie him up to the pillars of the mosque. Uh huh. So that all of you might see him. What a wonderful act. The Prophet, guys, now finally he cut a genie and he is going to show all the Muslims the genie. They never saw a genie before. But look what happened. Unbelievable. I remember, but I remember the invocation of my brother Solomon, and I grant me a kingdom such as shall not belong to any other after me. What does this have to do with capturing the genie? You capture the genie, and now we want to show him to the Muslim. What this, what, what, what Suleiman he said in the Quran have to do with this? So the Prophet he let him go. <laughs> yeah, red lead. Yeah, you were a Christian before. You know, I used to be a Hindu before because I used to like uh, beef, you know. And I'm sure you used to be Catholic too. My friend, you Muslim don't believe in demon, don't lie to yourself. In Islam, you believe in genie, and genie, they are flesh and body, and they have sex, and they have penis, and they have vagina. Even the Quran witness for that that genies Muslim genies genies of Allah they have sex with Muslim women The Quran says Chapter 55 verse number 60 uh, 56 that genies Allah will create for you women who know genie or neither man brought their broke their virginity skin broke their virginity skin so what do you mean they are what they are how somebody he is not a human he can have sex with the women any Muslim can tell me and how Allah is saying that those women they are in heaven no no human neither genie broke their virginity skin I thought there's no genie in heaven and there's no human in heaven who's going to break their what does that mean any Muslim can tell me You see a translation here, all is false. Untouched doesn't say untouched. It says here, no genie, neither man, has opened their hymens with sexual intercourse. Do you see it? That is a clear evidence that the Muslims believe that Muslim women they can have sex with the genie. This is why if you go and search in the in the in the web you will find tons of articles made by muslims speaking about 
a Muslim man or Muslim women having sex with a genie actually Muhammad he said before a man he have sex with his wife he have to say a certain prayer otherwise shaitan will round himself around the penis of the man and he will be the one doing his wife According to Muslims, anyone who have a cross eyes, this has happened because Shaitan he share the women with the man. When the man is going to do intercourse, Shaitan he wrap himself around the penis of the man. The man he think he is doing having sex with his wife, but the fact it is Shaitan doing that, and the women she will give, get a breath net, but the son will be a person who have a cross eyes. If there is any one of you he have a cross eyes now we know why Muslims my dad for sure he did not say the prayer of Allah how come I don't have a cross eyes any Muslim can tell me Any Abdul? By the way, in my coming book about Quran, uh, sorry, uh, sex and Allah, you will find a lot of those stories and you will die from laughing. All with reference. You saw nothing yet. Do we have any Abdul? According to Muslims, there is many kind of genie. One is called Afrit, and Afrit is the most powerful genie. Then the second part is the one who they are stupid, and those are called Sufahaul Jinn, which means the silly, stupid genie. Those are the one who hurt a human being and cause them diseases like being possessed or have epilepsy <laughs> and the third kind of genie is the one called the Gilan and Gilan is a polar name of the word rule and they are the magician of the genie <laughs> and those are the one who heard the children of Adam let me see if I can find you something in English about that. Okay. Mm, no, 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 no. Oh, hold on, hold on here. I found something actually I should mention. Uh, here this is a hadith about the prophet he was going to forbid suckling during the women she is a bread net why the prophet he want to forbid that because he was afraid that this is will cause a problem you see the superstition of Muhammad but then he noticed that women from the Greek people the Roman and the Persian they are doing that and their children are fine so he decided not to forbid it and this is again additional proof that Muhammad is a man who fabricate things he make decisions based on nothing look at here I intended to forbid suckling during women being pregnant but I considered the Greek the Greeks and the Persian and I saw that they practice it without any injury being caused to their children so here is an example of Muhammad trying to make a law based on stupidity. He's just guessing. You see it? Let us continue. Uh, Looks like we cannot find this one in English. All right. Hmm.
Mm. I'm just trying to find some stories in English. All right. This website really is horrible. And if I keep flipping, I will hurt your eyes. Anyway, do we have any Muslim want to say something? If there is any Muslim want to say something. If we go back to the chapter we were reading from about Adam and the angels, we will find something very funny that Allah he ordered the angels to bow down and he got upset from the genie and we spoke about that but there is something more funny the story of Adam is extremely stupid let me show you Chapter 2, verse number 36. We will go a little bit before it, so Muslim will not say we are misquoting. If you if you if you see with me here, and behold, we say to the angels, bow down, and they bow down, not Iblis, he refused, and he was of those who reject faith. This is one side of the story. We go to the front verse. Because I want to compare between two. Chapter 2, verse number... Uh, we mentioned here chapter 2, verse number 34 already. And now we will go to chapter, let us see, okay, chapter 7, verse number 11. <clears throat> In this verse, or this chapter, the story became more clear. What happened after shaitan, he disobeyed Allah, and he refused to bow down to Allah, sorry, to Adam. Read with me carefully. After Allah, he ordered all the angels to bow down, and Iblis, he refused. Allah said to him, It is we who created you and gave you the shape. Then we bade thee, the, the angels, prostrate to Adam, and they prostrate, not so Iblis, he refused, to be of those who prostrate Allah said speaking to Iblis to Shaitan what prevented thee from prostrating when I am commanding thee he said I am better than he though did did create me from fire and him from a clay Allah said get thee down from this get thee down from this down from where anyone understand from where what does that mean get down from the from this he is just kicked out of heaven allah just kicked out shaitan of heaven and this is very important because that is another, another mistake in the story Any Muslim? Allah just kicked shaitan out of heaven. Any Muslim have an objection for that? Any Muslim have an objection for the translation?
we can go right now and we can check the interpretation for this verse and they will see they agree Allah he told shaitan to get out of the heaven this is a chapter 4 verse number 13 we can go to Ibn Kathir hold on Okay. 13, 14, Ibn Kathir. Read with me carefully. <clears throat> oh, hold on. Uh, this is not, sorry, not uh, four. This is seven. Seven, uh, 13, yeah. Seven, we made a mistake. What? All right, get down from this because you defied my command and disobeyed me. Get out, get out from where? From paradise. Do you see, guys? Allah, He ordered the genie, the shaitan, to get out of paradise. But hold on, the author of the Quran, because he's an ignorant, stupid, he made a big mistake. If we go back here in this chapter, when Allah, he ordered Iblis and he did not bow down, in the Quran here, doesn't tell details because the Quran is mixed up. The rest of the story is actually is in chapter seven, verse number 11, 12, 13. Here, if suddenly the Quran stop and jump to speak about Adam, we said, O oh Adam, there were thou and the wife in the garden, and eat from beautiful things therein. So Allah now told Adam, He created Adam now, and He said to him, Okay, Adam, enjoy the garden. But look what happened. Then did say Shaitan make them slip from the garden. Hold on. How in chapter 7, verse number 13 and 14, you just said to us that shaitan is kicked out of the garden. And how now he is in the garden, deceiving Adam and Eve. Are you with me, guys? Do you understand what I'm saying? He just kicked him out of the, of the heaven. When shaitan he refused, when shaitan he refused to bow, he refused to bow before Adam was created yet. Remember, the, Allah was saying to the angels, I'm going to create someone. He did not create him yet. And he refused to bow down, and Allah kicked him out of paradise. Okay. Then Allah, he created Adam and Eve in paradise, and he told them, enjoy it. How in the world shaitan came inside the paradise and deceived Adam and Eve? Any Muslim have an idea? As usual, Allah knows best. Any Muslim want to answer? Anyone? Uh, again, guys, uh, this coming Saturday, it's confirmed that at 4.30, we have a debate with Sheikh Ruhi. This coming Saturday, it's confirmed. This coming one, all right? We have a debate with Ruhi, Sheikh Ruhi from Egypt at 4.30. So please get your popcorn and get ready. It's going to be fun. And for sure now, Sheikh Rohi is prepared and he trained himself and he is, uh, you know, uh, he is ready. Maybe first time we took him into surprise. So this time there is no way. You know what I mean? This time there is no way. I mean, first time, okay, he was not aware of what's going on. Hello?
Is that Aisha? Is that Aisha? What a kid. <laughs> a Muslim. The wife of the Prophet, at the age of six, she became a wife. I will not be surprised if this is one of her toys. Especially the Hadith says that the Prophet, he entered upon Aisha at the age of 14 and still she was playing with her dolls. The poor girl, in the age of 14, she is playing with her dolls. Let me show you the hadith. And thank you, Muslims, for reminding me. All right, let us see. There we go. And guys, here I will show you a great example of the lies. Of Muslims when they translate if you read here in the hadith anyone see in the hadith anywhere it says my daughters in the English anyone of you see the word my daughters no way it doesn't say anywhere my daughters but in Arabic when Muhammad he asked her when he saw her playing with her dolls at that time she was 14 years old Muhammad he saw her playing with dolls. One of them have the look of a horse, and the other look uh, have the look of babies, and, do and specifically girls. Muhammad he said, "What is this? Has on it?" She, she replied, two wings." He saw, said, a, "A horse with two wings." And this is where Muhammad he got the story of Suleiman. She replied, "Haven't you heard about Suleiman?" Had horses with wings. You see, even the child Aisha, she heard this story. This is a very popular story. Learned from the Legion of the Jews. But here in the translation, there is something missing. The Muslim translate when Muhammad he said, What is this? Muslim they translate saying, She replied, My doors. That is not a true. She did not say my doors. She said my daughters. My daughters. Let me see. Let us get them busted. This is why you cannot trust a Muslim translation in any way, any way. فقال ما هذا يا عائشة عائشة قالت بناتي Google Translation Copy Paste We have to delete first this thing Now it looks like because here we have this thing let us take it off I am what or a Christian? What is that? <laughs> Let us see now. Made mistake. <laughs> ah, it's it it uh, it detect the language as Bashtu. But this is Arabic. What Bashtu, you idiot Google? Okay. So now supposedly it's corrected. Qalat Banati, my daughter, she said. Do you see it? So in the Arabic text, it says, he said to her, what is this, Aisha? She said, my daughters. And she was speaking about her dolls. She is in the age of 14, yet she is playing with her dolls, which means seven years, eight years, after being getting married to Muhammad, this child still a child. And the Muslim, they lie to us saying she was a growing woman. A growing woman playing with her dolls. 
call them daughters yes the word bent mean a daughter banat daughters but the question is why in the Muslim translation they did not translate the Arabic because this is very embarrassing the wife of the Prophet I mean isn't it in, even like now after they try to hide the true translation is it embarrassing that the Prophet wife she is having dolls she's a child like are you fixing it or supposed to now so instead of saying my daughters about the dolls, you you say just dolls. This is very embarrassing. What a prophet of God have to do with a child like this? What he want from her? What exactly he need? This man he have all the women he can have. I want to remind people that's always to find any update about me you go always to patreon.com and then you will see there there's there's a website it's called minds.com I have a page there too you can check me out there and you can subscribe and actually I load videos there sometime which is not uh, let us say I don't want to post them in YouTube uh, so be sure you subscribe to my pages just to be always up to date because you never know sometimes we can lose a channel i have many many channels the muslim they think they can make me lose channels you cannot do that i will pop up like everywhere people copy my videos and post them everywhere so it doesn't matter what you do it's easier my friend to fight the genie because he does not exist from fighting christian prince this is my page in minds.com please remember it minds.com slash christian prince you can sign there for it's for free website it's the same as facebook but it's better and they have a freedom they don't take your videos down and you know for sure unless you violated the, the law but they are not the same as a stupid software of uh, youtube and the garbage of facebook and then the other website we have is facebook we have facebook facebook.com slash the christian prince the christian prince all right and i have my twitter remember that too twitter.com christian prince christ is the one and then number one all right uh anytime like let us say a channel disappear you don't know where to find christian prince this is the easiest way to get updated because you will find there right away okay this is the new channel i'm going to use from now on please subscribe this is how we can always build things fast and that's why we are not worried about losing channels anyway because it's easy to find uh, you know we have let us say uh, a main address where people they can find us right uh, do we have any Abdul any Abdul is around No Abdul. Okay, well, it sounds good. No Abdul, it means no Islam. Look like the Muslims, they learn their lesson that they are no match. And you know, uh, uh, I hope that's this guy, Sheikh. Uh, and actually, I think this is what will happen. I think Sheikh Rohi, he will debate me this coming Saturday. And then he will keep coming to debate me more and more. Anyone knows why? Why he will come to me and debate me again? I mean, last time we have debate, it was horrible. Seriously horrible. This guy he left, he left the debate with, with you know without bones. Why you want to come again? Simply. If you are a person who is very well known 
and you have a lot of followers and you, you it's a career for you this guy he make living from this call himself shake teach people in the mosque and then suddenly in the front of your followers you look really bad so this man this coming Saturday he's trying to come back to get back his honor which is scattered left and right but next week he will come back and he will not get back his honor It's going to be even more horrible so what he will do then he will come back it's the same as a gambler the more he lose the more he want to play more yeah he's a real shake That's what he claimed. I mean, and this is what the Muslim they say. I never met him. What I can give you, Sheikh Rohi is the same as the rest of the Muslims. They are from the kind who says Allah knows best, and they are the kind who say something now after five seconds they deny what they said. And he is of the kind who say anything will hurt Muhammad, he will play taqiyya. All of them, all the Muslims are the same. You, you know what. Let me tell you what what is a sheikh in Islam is. Sheikh in Islam, as the Quran gives definition, is someone who knows nothing. It's just someone who says, "I believe." Correct? Isn't the Quran saying that? The Quran call the scholars of Islam is the one who say we believe, not the one who knows what they believe in. Read with me. والراسخون في العلم يقولون آمنا به. Okay, what does that mean? Translation. Read. The Quran confirm that there is a huge part of the Quran nobody knows what it means save Allah. None knows. It's explanation, save Allah. Look how smart this God. Look how smart this prophet. He gave them verses and nobody knows what they mean, save Allah. Let us take the address from the screen so it doesn't bother you. None knows it's explanation, save Allah. And those who are of sound instruction say, what sound instruction? The scar, supposedly, the, the sheikh. Is the one who say we believe therein, not the one who understand. So in Islam, in order to be considered as a sheikh, it's not necessarily to be a person who understand Islam, but it is necessarily to be a person who say we believe in it. Do you see it? You can change the translation; doesn't matter. You know, all Islamic translation is false anyway. And those who are firmly grounded in knowledge say, we believe in the book. Why they are firmly grounded? Because we say, we believe in the book. So what is going to give you the title of firmly grounded in knowledge is to say, we believe in the book. That all the requirement. You say, I believe in the book. You are firmly grounded with knowledge. So, to be a sheikh in Islam is not necessarily to be a scholar, it's just to be saying, I believe. As simple as that. And to be a Muslim is not necessarily to be a believer. Who said you need to be a believer? You see, Islam is different kind of religion. You just say shahada and you do not need to be a believer. It's not required to be a believer. If we go in the Quran, you will find the following. Hey, here we go. I just received an update uh, from Rene. She is saying that uh, uh, Sheikh Rohi, he claimed that he is Dr. Rohi. He have a PhD from Al Azhar University. Here we go. What do you want more? And you know what? 
next time when he start coming to me I will I will confirm that from him I will ask him did you hear him Renee saying that or people they say that he said that that he have a PhD I will ask him anyway uh, let us see here all right oh he told you okay he told you in private or he told you in the room because if he deny I'm going to ask you to take the mic and tell him what he said get ready hmm. guys read with me here okay can you can you send me a snapshot of the private message can you send me a snapshot uh, Renee good see guys she have a screenshot of it that's wonderful in front of us here the Quran said chapter 49 verse number 14 you can change the translation if you want to whatever you wish The Bedouin says, the Bedouin says, the Arab Bedouin, we believe, say, you believe not. So the, the, the Bedouin, the Arab, they say, we believe, we are believers, we are Muslims. We are believers in Islam. Muhammad, he gave them Quran saying, say, you believe not. But you only say we surrender, which means we became Muslims. You see, the word Muslim is not peace as the lie to us, it's a word mean you surrender. So those are people who they say we are Muslims, but they are not believers. Do you see it? Muhammad saying to them. Don't say you are a believer, say you are a Muslim. Don't say you are a believer, say you are a Muslim, because they are two different things. A Muslim is somebody who surrender. A believer is a somebody who believe. So it is not necessarily to be a believer in Islam in order to be a Muslim. As you see in the front of us here, those are Muslims, but they are not believers. And who, the one who is saying that to them is Muhammad, God. Say, say, we surrender, don't say we believe, for faith never entered your heart. How in the world those people, they became Muslims, but faith never entered their heart? Because Muhammad, he gave them warning in a previous verse saying to them, you are going to be called for a war with the Arabian Muslims and we will kill you unless you convert to Islam. So those people, they to avoid being killed, they says, okay, we surrender. And they told Muhammad, we surrender and we believe. He told them, ah, I know you don't believe in me. <laughs> don't fool me. You don't believe. You are a Muslim. You are just a Muslim. And this is why Islam is a, <coughs> is a big, <coughs> sorry, is a big scam because how you can be a Muslim but you are the believer that's mean people are Muslims not because they believe in it as simple as that guys this is this is the snapshot from uh, the phone of Rene all right I'm going to show you in the screen so now Sheikh Rohi I, I don't think he will say that in, unless he is really what he's saying this is Sheikh Rohi in Paltok you are a doctor I thought they said you are Sheikh I mean he answered I mean I have a PhD well he is a Sheikh he is higher than you know he is if you have a PhD doesn't mean he is not a Sheikh PhD is a person who is a sheikh already 
Sheikh is somebody have the authority to teach. PhD is higher because you can be a sheikh if you have, a, a, like, a, if you graduate from uh, Azhar University, uh, like two years of study or one year of study, you know. Uh, but here he confirmed that he have a PhD, so now he cannot. So she asked him, Al Azhar University. He said yes. Do you see it? So if he want to deny his uh, his own statement, that would be a problem for him. I don't think he will do say such a thing because you know he know that she will tell everybody and everybody will laugh at him if he is lying about it. And he have his own private room and he have you know. This is another snapshot from the phone from Pal Talk of Rene. She sent it to me. CP want if you can text, uh, you can next Saturday same time if you can do the debate. Mean, he said okay. She asked him where you go to university. He said, sure, which mean about Saturday. I am doctor. She said, do you mean what time or what country? He said, now answering, or she said, you're sorry. You are a doctor. I thought they said you are a sheikh. He said, I mean, I have a PhD. Do you see it? And the funny, the Muslims, they said that this guy is a setup. It's a theater. He is not even a Muslim. When the guy, he have a PhD from al -Azhar University, the Muslims, because he was totally destroyed in debating me, they claim now that he is not even a Muslim. I paid him. In Islam, there's many branches. Who care? All the same garbage. Does it make a difference anyway? You know, Al Azhar University, the Muslim, they claim that it is the highest university in the world. The Azhar University, excuse my language, is, is an official donkey university. If you don't have a grade, if you cannot make it, you go and you register in Azhar University. You know what I mean? Uh, Rene, what about you? Ask him. Ask him if you have a like a, a website about him or something. Ask him why, why I can. I don't know even his real name. I mean, what his full name is. Ask him if we if he have any uh, Facebook. Uh, he said he have Facebook, but it's empty. Maybe he have a Twitter. Maybe you have something. Ask him. That why he want to call me and why he don't call me. I am live on air. He can call me. Whoever want to call me, he can. I am live. Okay. Let me get some water. <clears throat> Do you need an invitation to call me? Any Muslim? See, we posted a video in the previous, in, in Arab, uh, sorry, in Arabian Prophet, and still people asking me, are you live? Well, I posted a video there saying I am in the other account. Why people don't watch? <clears throat> Do we have any Muslim would like to call?
Any Muslim? So please take a note. This coming Saturday, we will have a debate with Dr. Sheikh Rohi from Al-Azhar University. So now we have to correct the name. This guy, he have a PhD in Islam from Al-Azhar University, and he is a Sheikh. And that even make it better. Hello. Hello. Yes, hello. my friend. How are you? Yeah. Hello, Siki. I was watching your content, but uh, my question is a little off the topic. Uh, I've heard that banking interest is haram in, in Islam. Is that true? Well, interest is, uh, you know, Muhammad is tr trying to follow the Jews in many things, and interest is one of them, supposedly. But the Muslims, they, uh, you see, what the Muslims, they do, as an example, they say adultery is haram, right? Yes. But they allow to do uh, code like a travel marriage or uh, a tourism marriage or a student marriage. But this is adultery because you are marrying a woman for like a few weeks. You are a tourist going to Turkey. You don't want to stay alone. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? You marry and you call it tourist marriage. What does that mean? You go to a woman, you say, I am a tourist. I'm going to stay here for two weeks. I need a woman. I don't want to commit sin. I will pay you. Do you marry me for two weeks? And supposedly, this is halal. So the Muslims, they always say something and they do something else. So they say that interest is not halal in Islam. But what they do, they do other things. They name it different names. As an example, uh, the uh, what it's, it's called, uh, riba? The, no, the, the riba is the is the interest. They say uh, uh, the benefit of trade, the break of trade, the mm. uh, you know the win of trade. So the banks, you know, they they just give it different name mm. to make it to make it legal. It is the interest, but they give it yes, different name. They, uh, they also give and take interest, but theoretically they shouldn't. No, no, no. I mean, if if this is if, if this is a bank will go by Islamic law, all what they do, mm. they just change the name of the interest. They don't oh. call it interest no more. You know what I mean? Mm. Yes, yeah. yes. Like the dividend, they call, you know many names. There's tons of names. So they just change the name of it, and then it became halal. Just don't call it riba. Don't call it interest of uh, of borrowing money. As long as it's not an interest, it is halal. So just change the name. And this is what okay, the Muslims why do. Why did Muhammad uh, not permit interest? I mean, Muslims can do anything, but why did Muhammad not permit interest? Because he was trying to copy the Jews. So I think Jews take interest, but... The Jews don't take interest not because they are following their, their book, because they are not. You see, the Jews who did the business of interest is not the religious Jews. It's the one who don't care, mm -hmm. you know? And this is why actually uh, the banks was controlled by the Jews for a long time because during the time the Catholic Church was in control uh, they forbid the Christians from doing any kind of business with interest the first one who started the bank it was a Jew who put a bank in the street this is the bank it's just a chair table in the street and people they come and they borrow money from him and because he was not a Christian so he is not practicing against the law because simply this was not allowed only for the Christians to do so. This is why uh, the major banks in the world are established early by the Jews because the Jews, they got the opportunity of a job. Nobody can be in competition with them except them. It's like, you know, if you go to Las Vegas, you will see many of the casinos owned by Indian, American Indian. Why? Yeah. Because American Indian, they are people who they are native and the government in USA, they decide to give them an ex ex exception so they don't pay tax. And because of that, they have, you know, I mean, a, a casino business for them is very nice business because they pay no tax. So all what they need yeah. to do, they go like you, if you are a businessman, you want to open a casino, you go to an Indian man, you say, we want to register this in your name. And you 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 borrow the money from me supposedly, and you open a casino, and you give me etc. From the mm. from the money you make, so uh, uh, always there is a reason for those things. However, Muhammad is just a person who copy, 
he is not he is a follower he himself is a follower he is not a founder muhammad uh, well, he followed this what else did he copy huh? he copy everything i mean name one thing for uh, me in islam from judaism what else did he copy from judaism uh, as an example did you see the muslim when they do hajj after yes. they do hajj they wear a hat correct small hat in their head yes but this is a jewish yes. hat don't you see the Jews, the Jewish hat, the small one in their head? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, this is a Jewish hat. Yes. Where, where Muhammad he got circumcision from? From the Jews. Muhammad never circumcised. Never, never. He's not circumcised. <laughs> where, and how do you prove that? Well, you, uh, there's a books of history, and you know, the Quran says, uh, Allah, Allah Himself He circumcised him. Why Muhammad don't need to be circumcised? Because supposedly Allah, He is the one who circum did circumcision for him. You know, uh, even yes. baptism, even baptism is exist in the Quran. Baptism, you see, everything, everything in the Quran is coming from somewhere. Muhammad <clears throat> is a follower; he is not a founder. The only thing he found is verses about him, about his sexuality, about his money. But most of the other rules is coming from others, either the pagan Arab. Or the the Jews, or the the the, the, the false cult Christians, uh, like the Nasara, uh, you know, etc. Everything Muhammad he have is from. So where where Muhammad got the black stone from the pagan Arab? Where he got the Kaaba from the pagan Arab? Where he got the uh, uh, Safa and Marwa from the pagan Arab? Where he got the house of the Shaitan from the pagan Arab? Everything he have. Where he got the the abolition from the Sabian? Where he got Ramadan yeah, from the, from the Sabian? He also copied a funeral prayer from Jews. Everything, everything. The funeral prayer. You remember the example? Where Muhammad, he got the story of uh, uh, the punishment of the grave from the Jews. Yeah. You know? All those stories, Muhammad, he got them from somewhere. He have nothing of his own. The only stories about from his own, like if you go here in the Quran, The Quran speak about something maybe many of you do not know in chapter 2 verse 138 what does that mean what is this verse saying they ask Muhammad how come the Sabians they do baptism the Sabian by the way they do baptism why the Sabian they do baptism the Sabian they learn that from John the Baptist they claim that they are following John the Baptist okay if you read with me guys do you see what it says the baptism of Allah, you see here between two brackets, is not exist in the Quran. This is false. This is the translation. Of Allah. The baptism of Allah, and who can baptize better than Allah? Like what the heck? But Muhammad don't have baptism. Yeah. So what's happening here? How Allah do baptism, and did Muhammad do baptism? Never. <laughs> so what Muhammad he claimed when they ask him. How come you are a Sabian, but you don't practice the baptism of the Sabian? He said, the baptism of Allah is better than their baptism. And there is a reason for this. You see, the Sabian, they live next to the river of the Euphrates and, and Dijla. They have a lot of water. Muhammad is a person who lives in the desert. If you want to do baptism to a follower, where he would do baptism to him? The water they have is hardly enough to drink. Mm. They don't have a lake. They don't have a river. They don't have a dam. There's no water. So he cannot do baptism. But yet he did not deny that he is a person who believes in baptism. Do you know this? What he claimed yes, yes, yes. that when somebody says Shahada, Allah baptize him in heaven. Mm. So the baptism of Allah is the best baptism. I don't do baptism. Allah do baptism. But yet, if we ask the Muslim, yeah, if we ask the Muslim, where what the word baptism mean anyway? Any Muslim can tell us. Baptism in the name of whom? 
you see in the in the in the Arabic language it says sabaga sabaga which mean color color you know sabaga it's yeah. color okay if we say color here for sure it doesn't doesn't mean that he color you with the color this is the word is used exactly by the Sabian for baptism this is the the term you see the Christian don't use this the Christian they 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 in, in Arabic we say Ammada Ammada which means straight out straight things out Ammada we don't say Sabaga Sabaga is something the Sabi and they say about what they call baptism Christian don't use that word so Muhammad is obviously is not copying the Christian baptism here is talking about the Sabi and baptism for this is their terms and this is their speech they do Sibaga they color you by the color of God Muhammad is a founder of nothing Allah is a name exist before him all so the prophets names he mentioned was so successful in the beginning he how was not he convince everyone he was not successful in anything my friend Muhammad he said if only 10 Jews believe in me if only I wish all the Jews will believe he could not convince 10 Jews you see so the, then he the one let, let me let me ask you let me ask you do you know who is the first do you know you do you know who is the one who follow Muhammad in the beginning according to Islam uh, the first follower I think it was Fatima no the first followers is the outlaw the rob the robbers robbers yes let me show you I will find the hadith. However, the Islamic books prove that the first followers of Muhammad are the outlaw, the robbers, the one who used to attack the uh, 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 the people who do Hajj. Uh, let me see. Blah, 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 blah. Hold on. I will find it. No problem. Uh, mean thieves the 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 pirate you know the one uh, the yes, one yes. who do the, the one who do piracy for actually you will find this in my coming book you know uh, read carefully with me this is the Muslim translation guys this is the Muslim translation please read and laugh look, look what they say to Muhammad uh, etc. Say to the Prophet, nobody gave you the pledge of alliance but the robbers of the pilgrims. Do you see it? Yes, yes. I, i.e., those who used to rob the pilgrims. <laughs> Do you see it? Yes, of course, I see. So, who is the follower of Muhammad? Robbers. Robbers. Thieves. Did Muhammad say no? Pirates. No, read carefully. Did, did Muhammad say no? No. Muhammad did not say no, they are not. Look what he said. They agree. And now you will see that those robbers are not only a group of people, they are a tribe of robbers, which means this is what they do for, <laughs> for, uh, for, for a living. They are thieves. They are, the, they are the trashy society of the Arab. You see, they are like, a, this is a tribe of, this is what they do. Like, you know, if you go in certain areas, uh, you know, I don't want to put people down, but just to give an example, if you go in India, there's people who they are, they do haircut. Is that correct? Yes. Like the whole tribe do haircut. The whole tribe do dishes. The whole tribe, they do uh, mm. copper work. The whole tribe, they do farming. The whole tribe. So here, a tribe who do nothing, they don't do anything for living, living, uh, for, for living except attacking and robbing. Yeah. And look what the story is saying. The guy he said to him, nobody give you a ledge of allegiance, but the robbers of the pilgrims, i.e., those who rob the pilgrims, 
from the tribes of as Islam, Ghafir, etc., etc., and then Ibn Abi Yaqub, this guy, the reporter says, the Prophet said, "Don't you think the tribe of Islam and Ghafir and Ghafir and Muzaina are uh, and oh, and also perhaps uh, Juhayna are better?" He just said they are <laughs> they are robbers. He just told him that, you know. So Muhammad he says, "Don't yeah. you think they are better? Why they are better? Because they follow him." He didn't say they are not robbers. He didn't say to him, and look what this guy said to him. Nobody gave you, nobody, except the robbers. Muhammad did not say you are a liar. That's not true. They are good people. He says, ah, but don't you think they are better than the other tribes? Which means he agreed that yes, they are criminals, but for him, they are better than the other one. Imagine, he said, they are better than Beni Tamim. Beni Tamim are a very well-known tribe of the Arab, famous one. Mm. Beni Amir, Beni mm. Asad, Beni Ghatafan, all those, the big names of the tribes. Muhammad, he said they are better than them. <laughs> Why they are better than them? Because those, the tribe of the first, they follow him. They follow Muhammad and the tribe of the good ones, they did not follow Muhammad. So suddenly the good one became bad. bad. So those are bad, the one in blue. Why they are bad, but they are not robbers. Those are honorable people. Those are the tribe of the robbers. Why they are better? And and Muhammad himself used to rob caravans, right? And this is why they join him, my friend, because they found it an opportunity. He he agree. They agree with his life of style, and he agree with their life of style. You know, mm -hmm. so. It's an opportunity now we can attack and we are not thieves. We are Muslims You know, what I mean <laughs> we can attack we can steal we can rape we can take women But now we are good. We are following a prophet. It's not we are not a bunch of gang anymore. We are good ones If you wanna if you want to imagine Muhammad imagine the pirate of the Caribbean in the ship mm -hmm. <laughs> And Muhammad is captain. What his name? Uh, Jack Sparrow. Uh, Jack Sparrow. Yeah, that is Muhammad. He is Jack Sparrow with the golden teeth, and he have a long hair, as the Muslim they describe him. He take a shower once a year. He is full of lies, and he have no dignity. He 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 promise something. He do something. He make an oath. He break it tomorrow. He make a promise. He don't care for the promise. That is Muhammad. His followers are nothing but a bunch of thieves and imagine this is written in their books okay hold on what do you expect the Muslim to say after we showed him this hadith what, what do you think what they will say uh, it's out of context no That's they will the say they're no they no it's weak come on you forgot <laughs> come on man <laughs> it's weak yeah <laughs> you know better it's weak but this is Sahih al-Bukhari and nowhere it says weak do you see there any, anywhere it says weak no but yeah. right away, if you show it to a Muslim, you say to you, oh, this is the week and they did not eat very good food. There is no proof of it. <laughs> what do you mean there is no proof? There is tons of reference here. Huh? They said not every hadith from Sayyid al-Bukhari is considered Sahih. Some are Hassan, some are Sahih. Why My friend, say Hassan, very... Hassan is accepted. Week is accepted. Reliable. Yeah. And this one does not say it's not. Uh, you see, when it does not say Sahih, it's mean for sure it is Sahih. There's no need to mention it is Sahih or not. You know? Yeah, I get it. The, the word Sahih is something added later. You know, the book doesn't doesn't have that. The book itself does not have. That's why it's called the book of Sahih Bukhari, which means everything is inside considered Sahih. There's no need for the author to say this one is Sahih. You know what I mean? If I say yes, to you, yes. I am going to have a book, have all the correct Hadith. And then I say each one of them next to it. I say this is correct. You just told me this is the whole book is correct. So why you want to add that there? So those things they added later, you know. So but, for fourteen hundred years they filtered out every field from the collection, right? And now they got since the beginning. Okay, my friend, the Quran, the Quran filter itself. Don't you remember when the Quran says that Allah He said He will cause Muhammad to forget the Quran? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it this is filtering? Why in the world 
God he made Quran and he promised to reserve the Quran then he promised to make you forget the Quran so why you send the Quran if you want us to forget the Quran or what happened when the Muslim they speak the Quran have abrogation it is just a filtration as an example they also hold on, hold on. as progressive revelation <laughs> hold on when the Quran says a verse like this about the punishment of murder chapter 2 verse 178 it says here all who you believe in the law of equality is prescribed to you in the case of murder that the free for the free slave for the slave women for the women how in the hell somebody claim to be a prophet and he says such a stupid thing so if i am a free i kill a free i will be killed if i am a free i kill a slave i kill you kill my slave if i am a man you kill my women i you kill you, i kill your women you kill my women that is not justice this is a stupidity and if you ask the muslims is this verse is practiced now they will say no it's abrogated what does that mean? It's so filtered. It even in the Quran, it is filtered. It's filtered. Muhammad he noticed later that the people are laughing at him about this stupid verse. So what he decided to do, he decided to abrogate the verse, to fix it. This is what abrogation Islam means. Otherwise, Allah he made a judgment about in the case of murder. I mean, do you need to change it later? Why? Hmm. How we can approve? A punishment for murder two weeks before and then we change it two weeks after that's mean Muhammad he found that this is a stupid and people they start laughing at him so he said to himself okay I receive a better verse from this this is why the verse in the Quran here says that any of our verses we abrogate or cause to be forgotten but we substitute something better or similar how in the world God he makes something better than his Quran Allah make Quran better than his Quran <laughs> And if you want to make similar, what? How is stupid to say similar? Because similar, there's no need to destroy the first one. Then it's similar. Yeah. Of Imagine I I break your TV. I take your TV. I throw it. You have a Sony TV, huh? Forty inch. Mm -hmm. I take it, throw it from the window. You say, why you did that? He said, I'm going to bring you similar TV, Sony forty inch. Well, why you want to do that then? <laughs> if you are going to bring me forty six inch, you will bring me fifty five inch. Okay, no problem. But you want to bring me something similar? So what the point? So why did you even break it? Because simply Muhammad trying to get rid of embarrassing verses. Where we can find the verses of women suckling of an adult? We can't find it. And breastfeeding. Yeah. In Sunan Ibn Majah, I guess. Yeah, but we can't find it in the Quran. This is the verse in the Quran. Yeah. So the Quran have verses of suckling for a man ten times. And we have verses abrogate the first verses of ten times to five times. But now we can't find the 10 time. We can't find the five time. Yeah. They're Why? All gone. Because somebody did filtering for the Quran to make it look better because this is very embarrassing. A Muslim woman, she is going to give her breast to a guy and he is going to stand mm, time. <laughs> and the funny, Allah, you see the Quran says, Allah will cause us to forget the verses, but obviously we did not because here we go we're talking about it. And the Muslim, they talk about it. You know what I mean? Mm, yes. When he say we abrogate them, but we know them. We, when he say we cause you to forget them, but we remember them. <laughs> the Muslims they filter, Muhammad he filter, everybody filter. Whoever Uthman he came he filter all the Quran. Then Ibn I, Ibn, Ibn Ishaq, Ibn Ishaq, when he wrote the 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 Sirah of Muhammad, the biography of Muhammad, he said from the beginning, I'm going to filter all the things which is not suitable for the Prophet. So God knows how much is gone. There are a lot of filth left, even after filtering. Yeah, but this is this is now I, after filtering is stupid and funny. But imagine if we have all <laughs> things before filtering. The original funny. text, yeah, yeah, you know. So progress, progressive revelation is nothing but a lie forced by Muslims in order to defend Muhammad's imbecilic teachings, right? All, all, uh, all, all Islam is, uh, you know, is something went through many. You see, let me describe to you what Islam is. Have you ever seen a manufacturer that do uh, uh, like uh, 
uh, let us say seafood yeah okay the fisherman he got the fish then he bring it to the shore in the shore there's a guy who mm -hmm. buy from the fisherman and then this guy he put it in the freezer then the guy second day either he said to buyer who want to buy directly or he said to a company who do business of fishing fish uh, uh, production you say to the company the company right away they wash it they clean it and they then they they uh, they prepare it to uh, uh, to be preserved and they put it inside a plastic case and they suck yeah. the air blah yeah. blah blah this is islam islam went through a lot of a processing and in every process somebody takes something out of the fish so at the end they try their best to deliver to you what is supposedly the best of the fish the stomach the belly the poopoo -poo, all is taken off the skin <laughs> the cover so there's a lot of the, yeah left. everything everything is dirty disgusting the the fish tastes good right but all of us we know if you if you if you clean a fish inside your house all your house will smell bad yeah but the fish is taste very good but fish smell bad so muslims are through the processing they try to make islam taste like a fish trying to get rid of all the bad smell whatever is inside the belly all the stupidity all the worms all the dirt because the fish eat everything so they try <laughs> to clean it and make it look look nice as a fish delicious and good to eat all right i get it are there verses from umar in the quran verses yeah well uh, umar he said my god i agree with me in three and some other hadith uh, says uh, uh, Allah agree with him in ten. Some other hadith says Allah agree with him seven. However, Allah agree with Omar. Omar is God. <laughs> you know, Omar is God, and uh, uh, Muhammad he agree with many uh, many people. You see, there is a book. It's called Asbab al Nuzul, which means the reason for the verses to come down. Do you remember the hadith where it says that the Prophet he forbid people from going around the Kaaba naked? No, I don't. Well, the Arab used to go around the Kaaba naked even after Muhammad he took over the Kaaba. Now the Muslims control the Kaaba. Why Muhammad don't forbid the Arab from going around the Kaaba naked? What happened? There was a woman. She go around the Kaaba naked, and Muhammad he liked her. He wanted to marry her. He wanted to have her another way. When she walked naked, she was thinking, "This is what is uh, uh, exposed of it, and I made lawful none of it." Which means, yes, I'm walking naked, but I don't want any man to sleep with me. All right. So she is walking, yeah. walking totally naked, having no clothes. And Muhammad, he was watching the scene. He liked it. All right. So he wanted to have her, but now, how he can have a woman? She is going to walk naked next year and the year after and the year after you know she she do that every year yeah. she is good looking she's beautiful so Muhammad when I have her Muhammad he did not forbid people walking naked around the Kaaba all the time Muhammad never spoke against walking around the Kaaba naked all the time he claimed to be a prophet you will not find anywhere in the Quran Muhammad saying why you walk naked can we shouldn't we find a verse in the Quran speaking about such a shameful behavior of course do you know guys what I mean people in the chat do you know what I mean imagine if we let us compare a story about the temple of God in Christianity and the temple of God in Islam the Kaaba <laughs> is the most holy place for the Muslims the the temple is a holy place for the Jews Jesus, when he saw people buying and selling in the Kaaba in, in the in the in the temple, what he did, he went inside the temple and he, he flipped their the tables. tables. He kicked them out just for buying and selling. There, nobody is going naked. Nobody is going naked. Muhammad, he spent most of his life, sixty years of his life. He brought all the Quran. Allah sent him all the verses in the Quran, and never mentioned once not to go around the Kaaba naked. Any Muslim can explain to us. With sex. Huh? Much of his life went into sex. No, no, but I'm saying why Muhammad never mentioned something against this all his life. 
Why, he was not a prophet. Why Allah don't see it? We, there's a there's a guy. His name is Ahmed Ma. Want to debate me? Ahmed, are you there? Who is the Muslim one to call me? Uh, hang up, uh, please, my friend. Let us see if a oh, Muslim yeah. want to call. Thank okay, thank you, my friend. Thank you for calling. Who is the Muslim trying to call? Who is the Muslim? Like, there's somebody want to call? Ahmed Ma. How are you, Ahmed Ma? Are you of those who go around the Kaaba naked? Or you wear something until now actually the Muslims they were around the Kaaba wearing no clothes no clothes look how Abraham he ran away he's talking about unseen demon my friend what unseen demon your prophet according to your prophet he was controlled by the by by by, by shaitan and you Muslim don't believe in demon since when you Muslim believe in demon demon is a belief in Christianity not in Islam you must then believe in genie in the ball. Do we have any Muslim on a call? Anyone? Yes, Hunter. What do you have? What do you have? You want to call me, Hunter? Don't tell me you are asking if you can go and do a naked walk around the cabin now. Any Muslim? <coughs> DK Dawa, I, I will call you, my friend. Give me your name in Skype. I will call you. Hey, Mustafa. Mr. DK Dawa, what about you? Give me your name in Skype and I am willing to call you. Is that fair, guys? I will call you. If you speak to the majority, you also address the minority. I answered that already, my friend. First of all, what is the proof in the Quran that there is a majority of angels versus minority of genie? That's stupid. Show me the reference. The Quran says there's angels and there's jinn. Shaitan, Iblis is one of the jinns, which means there's many of them. Where they got that this is a majority and minority? Zakir Naik was counting them. <laughs> he was there. I mean, this is stupid. You know what I mean? Quran doesn't say there's majority and there's minority. Show me the reference. Show me the reference. Same time, when the Quran speak always to men in the in the in the Quran. The Muslim will ask them why Islam allowed you to marry more than one wife. You say because there's more women than men. So why Allah don't speak to the majority as females? Why the Quran speak always to men when the majority are females? You know what I mean? Are you getting my point, Hunter? Who is the majority according to Muslims in the society? Women. So why Allah in the Quran keeps saying speaking to the believers as men? Shouldn't he speak to them as females because the majority are females? Even in the heaven, the majority are females, but yet still Allah in the Quran speak to the majority, speak to the to the to the people of heaven as male. That's why he promised them virgin who have nobody touch their private part. The logic of Muslims not only weak. Cannot stand in its feet. Cannot stand. <laughs> All right. Yeah, this man right here is a kid. He's sending me a video, a stupid video. Do we have any Muslim want to give me a call? Who is a Muslim on a call? What is the majority of population according to Muslims in this earth? They will say women. This is what they will say. They will say Islam when he allowed when, when Allah he allowed men to marry more than one woman because many women they cannot find a husband. So the majority are women. So why Allah don't speak to the believers are female? Arabic is very sensitive language. Which means it's easy to make a definition between male and female. 
not like in English like in English you say you it can be you as a female it can be you as a male it can be you as a group in Arabic we don't have this males have words female have words one person have a word two person have a word three person have a word more than three have a word so there is no way to play games but because the Muslims they are desperate to find a solution so Allah was speaking to the majority same time my friend the idiot there he described something very funny he said the majority there was angels that can be happening in the Arabic grammar if we are from the same kind to make it simple for you he said if there is only one girl is there the girl is a human at the end do you know what I mean so if I say all a human there is no way I mean dogs is that correct do you understand me even the rules of majority have nothing to do what they are talking about because the angels are nothing to do with the genies are two different kind of creation it's not about gender here we are not talking about male and female we are talking about two different creation one is made from fire the other one is made from light we are not talking about male and female so the rule he is talking about is a stupid rule have nothing to do with our topic it's only about male and female was the genie a female angel <laughs> they don't have a brain they don't have a brain and by the way when it's come to Arabic we the Arabic Christians we are the best to speak Arabic go and see what it's called the poet of al muallaqat five poetry written by five arabic christian the best of the history of arabia not only that do you know who is the first hero in the arabian history his name is antara do you know who's antara he is a christian however those christians they did not live around muhammad around muhammad there's only nasara but the poet of the arabic christians are very well known they are the best even Muhammad when he suspect about himself being a prophet Allah said to him go and ask the Christians and the Jews so the Muslims cannot teach us Arabic the best of Arabic writing in the world are Christians the best of the poetry in the world in the old ages and today are Arabic Christians go right now and and uh, 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 search for Salim al Khuri as an example just for him look look I can read some of their poetry. The poetry of the Christians is in the Quran. Do you remember the verses where it says, you know, that the moon is split and the judgment day is near? This is Arab, this is Arabic Christian poetry. <laughs> anyway, if you have if you have my book, who of you have my books? Who have uh, my book, The Deception of Allah and Quran and Science? Open it. You will find a lot of Arab Christians' poetry is in the Quran. All the references there. This book have nothing of itself. This is just a fraud. I can show you tons of reference. about Muhammad is stealing verses teaching all is you know he stole it simply from either the Bible the Old Testament the New Testament you name it it is it is uh, simply the biggest fraud ever it is a stupid but it's working until now but it's working by the sword and that sword will not you know it's it's the, the days of the sword is gone it's not going to work and this internet thing destroy everything you see if I show you right now in YouTube who is the one is listening to me you will not believe it number two country in the world listen to me is Indonesia 
Indonesia, the biggest Islamic country in the world. Number one country is USA. Number two is Indonesia. Old days is over. There is no Islam, there is no Muslims, there is nothing. It's a joke. Do we have any Muslim would like to call us? Somebody's asking me about the Muslim. A Muslim said to him, "Well, you know what? Do you know that Islam encourage?" Uh, freeing slaves. I should make a video about this, but let me give you a first answer. Let me show you an example of a free and slave in Islam. Did really Islam free slaves as a reward or it's a, it's a, it is a penalty? Read carefully with me. Chapter 4, verse number 92. Never should a believer kill a believer. This is a fascist religion speaking about not to kill a believer. You can kill non-believers, but not to kill a believer. But if it so happened, by mistake, by mistake, okay? So what is the punishment? If one so killed a believer, it is all denied that he should free a believing slave. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Guys, do you see what it says there? You free who? You free a believing slave. What that what that will confirm to us? Anyone notice what that confirmed to us? That confirmed that the Muslims are allowed not only to own slaves, even to own Muslim slaves. Question: What kind of religion allowing you to own a believing slave? And here, why I need to be punished for killing by freeing a slave this is a punishment now this is not a reward you see many naive people they see the the positive side of it that okay we free a slave the fact this is not a, a an, like a reward for the slave this is a penalty for the one who did the killing are you getting the point so muhammad is making the the, the, the because this is this is very painful for those arab they love to own slaves so when you say to them, I'm going to take your slave from you, it's like you did, you know, Muhammad don't want to kill them because he needs the fighters. He cannot kill them. Those are the one who will fight for him. So now he want to make extreme penalty. What is the extreme penalty? I'm going to make you free a slave. But they want to say, please, please don't free my slave. I need my slave. Don't free my... No. Okay, you do that again. You do this. I'm going to free a slave. I will take one of your slaves. So this is not a reward for the slave. This is, was a penalty for the Muslims. Do you see it? Each time one of a Muslim do something wrong, the penalty is freeing a slave. But hold on. What if I don't have a slave? Go and buy a slave. That means the slavery market will, will 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 flourish. You know what I mean? It's like saying to somebody, okay, you want God to forgive you, you have to slaughter a chicken or free a chicken. Well, that means we need to capture more chickens. Are you getting my point? So now with slavery, it became a way to get out of a crime or penalty, and that means we need to buy more slaves. So Muhammad is a winner anyway. He is a slave seller. He forced you as a penalty, if you don't obey him, to free a slave. But then you have to buy a new slave replacing the first slave. 
because you need a slave. Uh, guys, look at this. Muhammad was born in a slave society. Hold on. Muhammad, the Muslim, they say to us, Muhammad was born in a very, very poor family. How he is a poor border from a poor, poor family, which means they never have slaves. Suddenly he became a slave owner. So if a slavery was exist before Muhammad, and you Muslim lie to us saying Muhammad came to free a human being from a slavery. He did not free anyone from a slavery. He owned slaves. I will give you an example. There's a guy, his name is Bilal. He's very famous. The Muslim, they say, Bilal will go to heaven. The first one who say, Allahu Akbar, the guy, Muhammad died, and Bilal is still as a slave. Bilal, he went to Abu Bakr. He said, if you bought me for the sake of Allah, will you free me for the sake of Allah? If you bought me for yourself, keep me for yourself. Muhammad did not even free Bilal. This man, he served him as a slave all his life. Muhammad died, did not free the man. If if Bilal don't deserve to be freed, who deserve? You know what I mean? This guy, he protect him. He is a bodyguard. He is the one who carry anything he want. He is his servant. He is the one who bring him stones to clean his ass. He is the one who collect money from the people when they when when Muhammad he forced them to pay money. He is everything. And then Bilal, he did not get his freedom. After all those years of service, Muhammad died. And is still Bilal slave. That is the truth. Do you remember the story of Zahir, when Muhammad he came from the back of a of a gay, and he hold him from his back, and he says, "Who buy this slave from me?" Muhammad was not joking. This is what he used to do. Let me show you the hadith. Let us see. <clears throat> oh, I cannot find it in English. Uh, too bad. Let us see. Yeah, I can't find in English. Sorry. Anyway, Islam is a very stupid, weak religion. Cannot stand for itself. A prophet who taught his followers that even you can use the name of God in vain, you can take a false oath. The Muslim, they will say to you, oh, oh, you know what? Sometime you take an oath for your wife, says, I swear I will not be late. I swear I'm not going to divorce you. I swear I don't like other women. But those not true swear, you like other women. So what Allah, he says, Allah will not call you to an account of your false oath. If you compare this to what Jesus said, Jesus even forbid us from taking an oath. Why? Because always you have to be truthful. Either you say nay, nay, or yay, yay. Why? Because liars, they love to take an oath. It's like, finally, he accepted me to say an oath because the second you say an oath, it's mean you are free to go. It's mean we believe you now. You know what I mean? In the other side, we have Muhammad who is telling his followers, you can take a false oath. It's not required for you to be truthful in your oath. You want to say to me, this is an oath you give to your wife 
who on who in the world what kind of God he teach his followers that you can lie to your wife taking false oath using the name of God in vain is your God is a joke the Muslim they say will respect God well you are taking oath obviously you are not respecting your God and you are not taking your God seriously and Muhammad he made those verses because he himself is the first to break his oath he made the promises to his wives about not to do things and then second day he break his oath this is Islam you cannot find one thing in Islam is not stupid just one it's impossible Any Muslim can quote for me something is noble in Islam? Anything? Like the Quran teaching something good. The Muslim, they said, you do know the Quran teach that you should respect your parents. But Muhammad did not respect his parents. Muhammad, he said that his mother and his father, they are filthy, they are nudges, and they will go to hell. You see, it's very easy to say things. I can make a speech to you about morality, but doesn't mean I am a good person who have morality. Speech is talk is cheap. And Muhammad, he have nothing but talk. But even his talk have no morality. A prophet, he said to himself that Allah told me any woman she want to sleep with me, it's a privilege only to me. This is morality. A prophet he told his followers you can marry only for wives according to Muslims, but Muhammad he have unlimited license. Why? Oh, because he's a prophet. Prophet is above the law. Since when? Prophet he break the law, or he obeyed obey the law. Oh, Allah he made a special law, one for the Muslims and one for Muhammad, because Muhammad is above Islam. Why, if a Muslim he have five wives, he will be killed? And Muhammad he have according to Muslims 13 and nobody dare to question nobody dare to question who, who they are it's a gang leader Muhammad is like the guy who is in the Caribbean uh, the part of the Caribbean movie what they call him the guy who have the the chest the heart who his heart in a in a chest what his name guys the guy who looked like a Satan who controlled the ghost ship that's Muhammad there's no heart he want to control everything is very hateful anyone don't agree with him take him down but the difference between Muhammad and that guy Muhammad is funny I mean Muhammad he said the most stupid things you can imagine Once upon the time, a Bedouin, he stand up in the mosque and he start pissing. He grab his penis and stop. The Muslim, they start up and he says, stop, stop doing that. The Prophet says, why you are stopping him? Finish, man, finish. It's okay, finish. What, what the heck? He's funny. We have to agree. We have to admit. He is a prophet. Who believe that the Kaaba is the holy house of Allah? Who believe that the house of Allah is holy, but you can piss in the middle of the mosque and he will not stop you. He's a funny guy because he ordered the Muslim to wash their, 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 their feet before they enter the mosque. But yet a person who is pissing in the mosque, he have no problem with him. Even the hadith says that dogs used to piss in the mosque. You believe it? And nobody clean after them. Liar? I am liar? 
Let us see. My father said, during the lifetime of Allah Apostle, dogs used to urinate and pass through the mosque, come and go. Nevertheless, they never used to sprinkle water on it. The urine of the dog. Do you see it? Do you see it? Dogs, they come and go. And what they do? What the dogs doing? You know what dogs do, right? They lift their leg and they piss everywhere. My father said, during the lifetime of Allah Apostle, this is not after Muhammad died. Muhammad is in the mosque. Remember, it's a one mosque. It's not like, a, you know, it's a small group. The dogs used to urinate and pass through the mosque. Come and go. Nevertheless, they never used to sprinkle water on it. Never. You can imagine how clean, how fresh the smell of the mosque. Do you see? Dogs, they go in and piss. And nobody clean. So what happened? Uh, what happened to the piss? They stay there. And why nobody clean? Because what a big deal. I mean, everybody smelled bad anyway. And you know, when one dog he piss, many dogs will follow because Muslim, sorry, because dogs they sniff. And if there's a dog he piss there, they piss in the top of his piss. You know what I mean? So you can see that the mosque of Allah at that time, it was a very attractive point to dogs. It was a place where dogs piss. This is why it says, come and go, come and go, come and go. Because it's like very attractive, you know. Any dog like, oh, here, there's my brother. He piss here. Let me piss here. And the Muslims are watching, you know. And the Muslims, alhamdulillah, with more piss. Alhamdulillah, more piss is coming. Alhamdulillah. And by the way, what kind of dogs those dogs? Are they holy dogs? And nobody kicked them out? What happened? Compare this to what Jesus did when he saw people buying and selling. We cannot compare. We are talking about dogs pissing inside the mosque and nobody move. Nobody care. This is why, you, you know, remember I told you that the one who join Muhammad are criminals. They are pirate. They are thieves. And this is why nobody want to clean. They themselves, they are criminals. Those people, they take a shower once every two years. If they take a shower. So dog's piss doesn't matter. I mean, so what a big deal. There's no way a person who have any kind of a cleaning in his life any kind of manner he will accept that the dog will piss where he pray not a place where he live necessarily i mean place where you pray is more important too because this is not only a house this is the house of god even there's a hadith it says that the prophet he used to clean the snots and the boogers of the muslims from the wall of the kaaba How in the world boogers are in the wall of the Kaaba? The sky, the sky was raining boogers? The snot? People, they have their snot in the wall of the Kaaba? Why? What happened? Anyone knows what the snot is? Who do not know what the snot? All of you know? 
if anyone do not know what the snot is let me know we can show you an image of it do we have any abdul Snot, snot, not shot. <clears throat> what don't? Well, there's, you know, I, I trust me at that time, look like, okay, if you are a Muslim at that time and you are going around the Kaaba and you see, and you want to take a selfie with the Kaaba, what is going to appear with your selfie? A snot. <clears throat> Let me see what the Muslims they call this. Uh... No, I'm not sure what the word they use it. <clears throat> Let me try to find you the hadith. Let us see. Find it. Oh. <clears throat> <coughs> okay, let's see here. Here we go. The Messenger of Allah, B P P B U H, saw a spittle or a snot or septum sticking in the wall toward the qibla, and he scattered it off. And look, guys, how much the Muslims are into details. They have to write this down. I mean, do you see how nice the Muslims are? They have to report history. This is history. It's a moment of history. The Prophet cleaning the walls of the Kaaba from spitting and from snot and from boogers. So we have to report to you, my friend. Do you see it? Look how many hadith, look how many stories. Look like there was a lot of snot at that time. <clears throat> yeah, if you want reference about Muslims fighting about over the water of Muhammad washing his underwear, washing his testicles, go to my, get my books. Go to Amazon, get my books. Search for Christian Prince. You will find list of my books. Get them. Full of reference. I never say anything without approving myself. Never, never. All my books come with reference. Actually, my books is nothing but reference. Why a Muslim he cannot spit in the front or in the right? His right. Anyone knows? Anyone? Anyone knows why you cannot spit in the right or in the front? The wisdom of Muhammad is amazing because the angel is in your right. So if you spit in the right, you are spitting of the angel. Look at this, at this problem now. You spit at the right side, you spit at the angels. Do you want to do that? The poor angel is next to you and you spit at him. 
why you don't spit in the front because there's an angel walking in front of you too so what we do spit in the left or under your foot your left foot or spit in your pocket or in your uh, your uh, what they call it in English sleeves sleeves the prophet is teaching me to spit in my sleeves are you sure let me see if I can find the hadith about spitting in the sleeves <sighs> what a religion man what a religion You can spit in your sleeves oh boy it might take a little bit of time to find something but we find it right Do we have any Muslim here would like to say something? Any Muslim in this agreement? Actually, I think I have this reference in my book, right? I think I have it in my book. Yeah. See, I don't save reference in my like uh, mark book because if I want to save every thing I know, my my bookmark will become like endless. It's it's going to be harder to fight from the internet from fighting it from my bookmark. Any Abdul? All right. Look like today there is no Muslims, and already it is seven twenty-two here. So I think for today we are enough. Yes, Skype is open, my friend, but no Muslim is calling. Guys, take a note, please. This coming Saturday, we have a debate between me and Dr. Imam Ruhi. He is from al Azhar University. He's a doctor. He have a PhD. So we will have a debate. He debated me last week, this Saturday, and it was horrible. Obviously, Christian Prince, he lost. So this guy is coming again because he want to beat me again. So get ready for the coming Saturday at 4.30. And... Um, you know, I know that we as a Christian, we will lose a debate for sure, as usual. And it's going to be very horrible. I hope the Muslim will not record me and post a debate everywhere. I hope so, you know. Uh, and uh, uh, me, myself, from now until then, I will eat beef and cheese kebab, uh, vitamin A and B and D. And I will get ready for a debate because maybe I can a little bit defend because we are weak, we Christians. Anyone remember how Muhammad he made his, his debate with the Christians? Who remember before we go? Who remember how Muhammad he had a debate with the Christians? Anyone remember? How Muslims did debate? I mean, this guy, the debate we are debating with the Muslims is not Islamic debate, it's not halal debate. The Muslim debate is as the following in the Quran. When a bunch of Christians, they came to Muhammad, they came to him supposedly from Ethiopia. And they said to him, let us debate. Muhammad, he cannot debate. What debate? Those are monks. They will make him shish kebab in a second. You know? 
So Muhammad, he came with a solution. Chapter 3, verse number 61. Look what he said. If any uh -huh, dispute in this matter with thee, what matter is about Jesus? Now, after all, for the fall of knowledge has come to thee, say, uh huh. Look what Muhammad say. Come, okay, come. Let us gather together, our sons and your sons, our women and your women, our slaves, your uh, ourself and yourself. Then let us in earnestly pray and invoke the curse, the Allah curse of those who lie. Like what the heck? This is a debate. Which mean if this sheikh want to debate me an Islamic debate, he should do this. He come and he says to me, "Okay, let give me my turn." He take the mic. He says, "May Allah cut my nose if I'm lying." Your turn. The Christian prince he take the mic and he says, "May Allah cut my toes if I'm lying." Your turn. So we will spend like this, and then the one who get tired first is the loser. That's what they do. You believe it? You see the coward. This is how you can debate. Obviously, he's just running away from debating them. What curse was the why? If a if a guy if a guy he is a Hindu and he told me that he don't believe in Jesus as God, he's not lying. He don't believe in him. He's wrong according to me, but he's not a liar. Correct? If somebody he worship rocks, and he told me he believed that his God is a rock, he just, he's not lying. What he believe in is a lie. But what he what he is saying is not a lie, for he is not lying. Lying is you knowing the truth and you say something else. A Muslim who believe Muhammad is a prophet, he is not lying. This is his belief. He's not lying about his belief. He is believing in a lie. So here, Muhammad talking about who's lying. That's stupid. But because he is a liar and he knew he's a liar, he don't want to debate he want to escape the debate so he said okay Allah he told me not to debate with you however we have a solution let us invoke Allah to curse the one is lying that is the potato Muhammad this is why you will not find Muslims calling me to debate me they want to curse you they want to have a curse party may Allah cut you pieces all right Anyway, guys, thank you for being here. May the Lord bless you all. And remember, tomorrow, if we are, are going to have our live podcast, mostly at 4.30, as usual, we will be here in the Arab for Christ channel for some time until God provides something else. So, uh, and remember, always you can find me in batterion.com slash Christian Prince, minds.com slash Christian Prince, uh, we showed you our Facebook so all those pages please subscribe so in case because you know I am a target of many 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 people who hate me and they think uh, they can really fight me uh, you know for me I have a lot of channels I can switch every day every day and it doesn't matter where I go here we go I just told them I'm here I have I have 200 people watching it doesn't matter where I go because people they are following me not following a channel and they are following me to learn not because I'm a prophet I claim nothing of myself I don't claim to be a bishop I don't claim to be a priest I don't claim to be a good person as any better as anyone I am like all of you I am just a person who knows what you know not specifically about the cult of Islam whoever would like to listen and learn is more than welcome it's a free school People who like to support us in what we do, feel free to support what we do. You can make a donation. You can buy my books. There's many ways to support me. You can download my videos. It's for free. You can share it with your friends. You know, we do everything. And when I say do, I'm talking about me and you because I believe that all of us, we partner together to make things happen for best. If you guys are not here, I'm not going to be talking to myself if people don't want to read my books I will not be writing writing my books if 
nobody want to listen I mean what the point of talking to yourself this is why I say we are partners in what we do here and I consider just people coming here as a support there is some people they can do more they can give donation that's wonderful but everybody do what he can do there is people who they are poor may the Lord bless them still by coming here he is supporting everyone he do his part I do my part and I do the best I can every day I spend hours in my day just to fight this cult and when I say hours I'm talking just about online like video now however when I finish right now I will make a cup of tea and I will start working in my other book so my day is about fighting this cult not hours of my day I get tons of emails questions people reference this is why I say to people please don't when you join here please take reference take notes I cannot answer everybody if you see guys my Facebook it's a scary Christian you said yesterday etc you said that's so quick we can find this one help me my friend I cannot I, and, and sooner or later this guy Christian Prince he will die if you want to get reference handy is get my books anytime you need reference because almost I'm covering everything like the new books is coming uh, about uh, 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 sex and Allah uh, this book covering everything I mean you will not find one issue about this cult it's called Islam is not covered when it's come to sex and uh, when I say one issue I mean that everything there is uh, let us say uh, giving you enough reference to debate any Muslim of a choice or no choice and show him that he have no answer and he cannot debate you this is a new cover for our book sex and Allah it's my design let me make the, uh, the cover small so you guys can see it all of it and let us take this thing off this book will be ready supposedly it should be ready by today actually but we found that uh, uh, there's a there's a printing you know like when the publisher make a final print so I found there's an error type error so we told them to fix it uh, so it might take like two days from now or three days and we will have the book ready uh, to be an Amazon but this is a fantastic book because it is let us say maybe the first of its kind uh, and you will have reference about things you never heard before uh, but just be careful this is not a book for children you don't give this book to your daughter she is eight years old all right don't do that it's not for kids as simple as that uh, and I you know in my translation I'm very honest there which mean I am not sugarcoating anything as usual I say it as it is as it is people like it don't like it I don't care I'm not going to change the meaning of the word because somebody he don't like this to see this word in the screen or in his in the in the page if you don't like to read about sex don't don't buy a book about sex this book is not about really uh, about holiness it's about sickness you know what I mean the whole purpose of the book is to show you the truth not to give you something is not there this is why you will see in the book the word the F word is appearing I'm not saying the F word I'm translating I'm not saying the F word I'm translating so you will find an honest translation as it is and I am sure that number one buyers for the books will be the Muslims because this is a very interesting topic for the Muslims all right so I want to say thank you guys may the Lord bless you and until I see you tomorrow God is willing Christ is Lord and Islam is false and see you soon again bye-bye and take care